you to start us off a worship this morning that reminds us that we are all made in the likeness of God. Well, my theme today is about choices. And uh, in the scriptures we read, choose today who you will serve. And uh, my thoughts have all been rekindled because of what we're going through again at the minute. And um, but Joshua 24 says this, Therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers who served in this region, or beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And Joshua said, But as for me, he made his choice, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I wonder how easy you find it when you're faced with a decision to make. Let's watch and see. This is really for the children, but we're all children of God anyway. Hey, Georgie, what you doing? Oh, hi, Adam. I just thought it would be fun to draw a picture. It doesn't look like you're drawing a picture. Well, see, I can't decide whether I should use a pencil or a pen. Oh. Well, how long have you been trying to decide that? I don't know, maybe an hour. An hour? Wow! Well, uh, whenever I'm having a hard time making a decision, I think about the benefits of each choice. Hey, that's a great idea. Would you help me do that? Sure. Well, a pencil is great because it can erase, so if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, that's right. Now, a pen can't erase, but it has a nice dark line, which looks really good on the page. Oh, you're right, it does. So obviously, I should draw with the pen. Or the pencil. Or the pen. Or the... Sure am. Take a look at this. Whoa! 
Uh, what exactly am I looking at? I used a pencil, a pen, and crayons to draw a red, blue, and orange dog cat. A red, blue, and orange dog cat. That's very creative. Thank you, Kyle. So, where should we hang it up? Well, we can hang it in here or in the hallway. Oh, let's put it in the hallway. Although, here's good too. But the hallway has more room for pictures. But the lighting is better in here. And on second thought, let's just put it on the fridge. I wonder if you have ever died like that. <laughs> when you're just so undecided as to what to do for the best. And uh, sometimes even simple decisions become great for us to make. But let's sing together. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. For you are a bright in heart, and you that have made him your choice. Be sadness and sorrow depart. Rejoice. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. And if you want to stand, you can. If you want to sit, you can. It's your choice.
Show us the path you have set for us and how to walk in it. Where we have been walking in disobedience, Father, forgive us. Let your Holy Spirit guide us in everything. That we do so, that we may not go against your word. Humble our hearts, so that we may be flexible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to listen to the message from the Lord.
you know it, don't you? To follow Jesus. But I discovered when I um, copied and pasted this from the computer, there's actually another verse included that we don't often see, which says, my cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. So let's sing together and uh, as I say, if you want to move, you can move and um, yeah, just keep ourselves my boy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move off the platform because I'm fed up and not seeing me. <laughs> I'm just not with you, just so I can have a little bit of a song myself and uh, enjoy worship too.
And so I went on the diabetic website to see um, what they suggest. And they said, if you're going to do that and your blood sugar's low, because if I get up and I've got like a four reading, you and diabetics will understand. There's no way I can go swimming on a four reading. I'll somebody will be fetching me out of the pool. And um, so they tell me to have an hour. Yeah. So if you want the spurt of energy at half past five in the morning, then you know what to eat there. The man just told you to have a banana. I'll okay. Be I'll be asleep. <laughs> you wouldn't, Derek, you wouldn't. And uh, there is a saying, it's good for us, but sometimes the choices we have to make uh, can be a little hard. And so I look, you know, I told you I like to see if there's a story behind the song. Just our second song says, My heart is fixed, eternal God, fixed on thee. And uh, now you'll have to excuse me if I don't say this word right. But the writer was Richard Dukes, who was born in, now you tell me, Clungenford. Yes? In Shropshire. Clungenford. That's an unusual name. And he actually died in West Bromwich, so I want to change. And, uh, or do you remember, do you know where this place is? Goat Hill. Well, that's somewhere in Shropshire too. But after his conversion in 1825, he became a local preacher. And he served as a primitive Methodist minister for 32 years and he retired in 1859 and spent his latter years in West Bromwich. A large number of his hymns and poems were first published on circuit plans and in various booklets. Most of his hymns were later included in a book entitled The Book That Will Cheer You. That sounds good to me. And I don't know the name of the next one, and living and dying. But in 1862, James Pritchard wrote his biography, which was entitled The Poet of a Million. So a local guy wrote this song My heart is fixed, eternal God, fixed on thee, and my unchanging choice is made. Christ for me, he is my prophet. My priest, my king, who did for me salvation bring. And whilst I breath, I mean to sing Christ for me. Let's sing the song right through.
tubes and tunes because they really know more better than me. Well, we're going to listen to, um, I think it's a singing company piece, you'll have to tell me if I'm wrong, but it's entitled Divine Right. And the first line of the song says, Who has the right to run my life? And it is the irrational fear 
of making decisions. Now, I don't know if some of you take the easy option and you say to one another, well, what do you think? Huh? Well, what do you think? Huh? Yes, I know. Uh, whatever you think. We'll do whatever you think. And uh, it's a way really of escaping to make the decision yourself. We rely on others because it's easier. We'll just fall in and follow the decision that they choose. But they tell me in its most extreme forms, it can cause people to have full-blown panic attacks because they're afraid of making a decision. Why? In case it's the wrong one. Yeah? And um, sometimes I think we're there at the minute. We don't know which way or what decision to make. And so we flounder. We flounder in our indecision. In our reading today, Joshua, as the leader of the nation, is encouraging his people to make a choice. They had journeyed for 40 years through the wilderness, which hadn't been without its difficulties, and now they were arriving at the promised land. And Joshua was about to lead these people into a new experience. And he asks them once again, because it's not the first time that Joshua had to confront the Israelite people. He asks them once again concerning their decision for the future. And he said to them, you have several options open to you. First, he said, you can serve the Lord with sincerity and faithfulness. Choice one. Choice two. You can serve the gods of your fathers who were in Egypt. Choice three. Or you can serve the gods of the Amorites who are in the land which we are in at present. And Joshua said, well, this is my choice. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you choose the gods of the fathers in Egypt, then you can choose the way that your parents and your grandparents lived. Heritage. And thirdly, we can choose the idols that are in our present culture today. Choices affect every area of our lives. Whether we choose in accordance to God's will or our own selfish ambition or someone or something else, the decisions that we will make will be in accordance to who we are really serving. Yet the reading test in Matthew chapter 6, no one can serve two masters. For he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. And Joshua said, it's time to make up your minds. It's time to enter a new land just as the followers of Joshua would. But I wonder if many of you have heard people say this to you. Nobody rules my life. Hmm? There are many that will say, we will have no gods to rule our us. But we are all ruled by one God or another, whether we like it or not. Let's ask a few brave men and they said, Alexander the Great, what God do you serve? I serve the God of military power and conquest, Alexander would answer. What about Plato? What God do you serve? I serve the God of knowledge. I try to 
go deeper and learn more than any other man. What about Edison? What God do you serve? I serve the God of science and invention. I keep busy night and day trying to learn more new things in the kingdom of science. I ask a great artist, who do you serve? I serve the God of beauty. I worship it at its shrine. I put the question to some great scholars, which God do you serve? I serve the God of wisdom. Then I put the same question to David and Moses and Paul, and they answered as well. We serve the God of heaven, the one who has existed before all else, the one who created the world, the one who holds all the power in his hands, the one who lives forever and who shall live forever, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Then we'll pose a question to each of us this morning. What God do we say? What God do we allow to rule our lives? Because depending who is there will be dependent on how we live and it will be dependent on the decisions we make in our lives. Rick Warren who wrote The Purpose Driven Covenant. I've never read that book. The Purpose Driven Covenant says this. Today I am crossing the line. I'm tired of waffling and I'm finished with wavering. I have made my choice. The verdict is in. My decision is irrevocable. I am going God's way. There is no turning back. I will live my life serving God's purpose with God's people on God's planet for God's glory. Rick Warren's covenant. And um, I wonder if we were be, to be so bold as Rick this morning. Joshua knew that these Israelites were a stubborn people. A stubborn generation that had grown up wandering in the desert for 40 years. And it was all to do because of the way they were, that they turned their backs on God many times during those 40 years. And yet God still rescued them. And Joshua were probably wondered how these people were going to answer because he couldn't make the decision for them. And we cannot blame anyone else for the decisions we make. Although we try, it's your fault. Hmm? I can just hear it now. It's your fault. No, it's not my fault. You, yes, it is. And we try to blame others eh? for the decisions that we often make. Well, they say Monday is going to be called the day of freedom, whatever that means. But for us, every day is a day of freedom. To choose in every area of our lives to serve God. To be. Or not to be. To do. Or not to do. To say or not to say, to give or not to give, to serve or not to serve. As we each of us move out of what could be called our wilderness experience, Joshua challenges each of us once more, choose this day who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? God or Satan, the spirit of the flesh, 
light or darkness, life or death, faith or fear, truth or lies. For his answers as both temporal considerations and eternal consequences. Joshua made it clear that there is no compromise in our religion. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of your slavery. You shall have no other God before me. It's as clear as that. You shall have no other God before me. Choosing to follow the Lord is the most important decision that we can ever make in our lives. Jesus told us, take up your cross daily and follow me. So in facing many alternatives in the way we live our lives, the people answered, for be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for the Lord is our God and he has brought us out of this land of Egypt. And they all responded by saying, we also will serve the Lord. And I, I read this story and I've never seen one. There's a snake, a rare snake, that's got two eggs. If you can visualise it, one will do, two eggs. Yes? It's called the copper-headed snake. And the snake only has one heart. It only has one set of lungs. But each head has its own brain. Now you try and work out how that snake has to try and live each day with two brains. One's enough, isn't it? And so it leads to many multiple problems for this animal. You see, both eggs want to eat. But since eating takes time, the snake is vulnerable to predators for twice as long. Each egg wants to go its own way. That means they can't respond as quickly as they could under attack. Even getting water is precarious as one head can drag the other down whilst the other head is drinking. Hmm? So he could drown in the other, the other part of him. Can you see the problem it's in? And I've never seen one, but they tell me if they exist, a rare breed. And an expert who knows all about these says this, based on the anatomy, it would be better for the right head to eat. But it may be challenging since the, le the left head appears more dominant. Experts also say that these internal conflicts prevent this rare snake from living very long. Because it's full of indecision. Every day, the one head wants to do this and the other head wants to do that. Can you imagine? Paul wrote, They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit do the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We cannot live for the world and the Lord together. Jesus says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Don't let double mindedness leave any of us in a vulnerable position for spiritual attack. Steer yourself the wrong way or drag yourself down. Make the right choices in every area of your life. Be single-minded in your dedication and devoted 
to the one true head of the church, Christ Jesus. We're going to sing a song. Um, Oft I've heard thy tender voice, which calls dear Lord to me, and asks a quick yet lasting choice twixt worldly joys and thee. It stirs my heart's deep fountain springs and breaks the barriers down. It bids me rise on faith's strong wings and cries, No cross, no crown. Let's sing the song together.
Now, happy day that fits my choice. On thee, my Saviour and my God, who will make this glory God rejoice and tell it to all abroad. Happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught Stop in the middle. 